Hey everyone, it's SDS Supercoach, providing Supercoach content for you. I'm here to present the Round 16 review. Uh, pretty disappointing week for me. Uh, as we know, there's not too much to talk about, so I'll go over my side real quick. And uh, yeah, so we scored 2,281, season rake 8,629, went down 503 spots. We got four trades left on three out of 12 leagues. Um, Yeah, disappointing. Now, there's obvious, um, this was the first week with, a full primo side this season and uh, certainly didn't feel like it whatsoever because I think I had six guys score under 80, which is just not good enough at the end of the day. So a couple of players, uh, I'm really uh, frustrated with a certain player. I might look to move him on. I know I've only got four trades, but um, I don't know. I'll sort of explain it. Let's get into the side. Um, yeah, just a couple of really good scores, but also a couple of really disappointing, frustrating scores. So uh, vice-captain was Zorko, 115. I thought, nah, we got full primo now. I'll back Dacos in. And it was probably the right call. One extra point, we'll take it. Uh, so, but yeah, obviously we want, we, we want more than that. But I mean, at the end of the day, like it was just a rough week for primo scoring and, I think Primo's has just been, I don't know, just a little bit disappointing. I know there's been some random uh, disappointing Primo's in the past, but I feel like this year there's just so many little issues with all of our Primo's uh, at the end of the day. So uh, a bit frustrating, but let's get into it. Dacos 116. I think Flanders was on 90 at half time, and Dacos was on 46 and everyone's Everyone was going, oh, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't Captain Flanders, you know, Captain Dacos, blah, blah, blah. And he ended up on more points. So there you go. That's why we wait for full game um, analysis um, and a full game's worth of data. So, yeah, Nick Dacos, I mean, considering this week, it was it was a pretty rough captaincy week. So we'll just take that. I, I was heading into the week and seeing, like, some of the matchups, and I just thought, gee, just some of these matchups just didn't suit any primos at the end of the day. So uh, she's a 103. It's fine. That's fine. He's been great. Uh, Houston 59. Now, this really pissed me off. Um, he scored a 59 uh, against the second easiest team uh, for defender scoring. And I just, I was even considering captaining him. And uh, I would have lost my shit if, I, if uh, he was my captain. But... Yeah, just hard. I mean, Farrell took a lot of the kick-ins, that sort of thing. I think every other every other defender scored perfectly fine. Just Houston just barely got used, barely used in the kick house. Farrell was the main distributor, so it'll be concerning going forward with the uh, with Houston. I mean, Houston. I don't think I don't think Houston like he, he always a sort of an issue for him was the kick outs weren't high. But he was just still scoring really well. But this was his lowest score of the year. So frustrating with that. Luke Ryan, 116, perfectly fine. Now, this is this sort I mean, uh, and that's what's frustrating about going down in rank. The fact that my massive pod scored a 148 in Nick Blakey, and we still went down in the ranks just due to all these other spuds in the side. A uh, bit frustrating, a bit concerning as well, because I know what, you know. I'm not fully confident with the Blakey pick and for him to go 148. I'm really thrilled with, but uh, unfortunately, uh, just a couple of bad results for scoring this week. So Blakey, extremely happy, 148. If he can just give me a 95 plus every week, not too many uh, Dower scores because, um, because yeah, I mean, um, he's a pot at the end of the day. And if he goes crap, I go crap. So uh, the fact he went really well and me still went down in ranks just shows just some of the holes in our primos. Uh, Hayden Young, 62. I mean, he, he's been good for about five weeks, so not going to harp on it. I mean, he's got Richmond this week, so you really do expect to bounce back. The forward time does concern me. Like he kicked three goals the previous week. And now all of a sudden they want to use him as a half forward. And it's just, just don't like that. They'll piss me off so much if they make him a half forward. Uh, you got a little bit of time there, not a not a massive amount. But if this lowers his CBAs, then I'm massively concerned about this pick for the run home. Uh, Bon and Pelly one fifty seven, even with the sore back, just fantastic. Uh, I guess the reasoning with avoiding the capsi on him. Um, 
I mean, the sore backs one thing. Beveridge did say like uh, it's a 50, uh, 50 to sixty percent chance that he'll play. That they weren't too sure, but he was good to go. And thank goodness for Bontempelli, one fifty seven, just amazing from him. And I was also worried, like uh, with along with the Phillips tag. And usually when he's uh, coming off a knock, he'll spend most of the time as a forward. So. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, flu game, injury game, Bont is uh, better than regular Bont, it seems. Gordon, 95, uh, he was on, like, low 50s, high 40s at three-quarter time. For him to pull out a really good score, that was really good. Uh, Sarong, 85, he barely scored in the second half, Sarong, so a bit frustrating in that. But uh, Sydney are, like, the toughest midfield in the comp to score against. Butters, 114, I forgot who Port played. It was... um. St Kilda uh, with the Windhager tag, 114. That's a good result. Here we go. Here we go. Just a couple of guys here with some mammoth scores for my side uh, with Blakey and Walsh just needing a little bit of faith out of them. And Walsh gives me 148, obviously, against Richmond, but it's nice to see a bit of reward here with Walshy. So I've had him for so long. I think it's been, what, 10 games? One, uh, two, four, uh, two, four, six. I've had him for nine games. Eight games prior, he never went higher than a 119. And for him to go 148 is nice for a change. And hopefully that's the sign of things to come as Carlton look to uh, be a massive contender this season. Dawson, 94. All right. I think he got tagged as well. I didn't watch a second in this game. Tom Green, bloody brilliant. 117. Good to see a bit of form back here from to Tommy Boy. So... Just hope he, uh, hopefully the past couple of weeks have let him recapture a bit of form. Matt Rowell, I've had enough of him. Seventy nine, fake primo. Um, he's ne he's never ever he's never been a, a midfield primo. I'd back in the boys a bit more if I know that there's been history, but he's literally never been a mid primo. Besides, uh, the little spurt that he had uh, in the first third of the season. I'm looking back at his scores last season. Because I'm pretty sure we saw a very similar trend. Look at this. One is, uh, I know it's not as good as it was this year, but you can see some of these massive scores. Then second half of the year, it's just very inconsistent, very poor scoring. Um, so, yeah, Rao's a massive problem, and I am looking to ship him off, I think. But I might might need to prioritise getting a 23rd, but uh, we'll give it a bit of thought. Max Scorn, 79. Uh, that's all right. Everyone has him. Who cares? Uh, Tim English, 70. He can get stuffed as well. He's fake as hell. Um, so very frustrating with a couple of these pr uh, so-called primos. Uh, English and Rao. I can't stand having them in my side, but here we are. Flanders, 114. Slowed up massively in the second half, but just missed a consistent. If you need a solid captain score, look no further than uh, Sam Flanders right here. Heaney, 85. Um that was all right. Also, by the way, with Nick Blakey, I, I was on the radio, I was driving home, and I heard just the commentators absolutely go nuts with Nick Blakey kicking a goal, and I was going nuts as well. I couldn't bloody believe it. Nick Blakey kicked the goal. Apparently, it was a really good goal as well. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Sorka, 115. Uh, used the data on that uh, for the Melbourne game. Melbourne, uh, I think the third or fourth easiest Um. Uh, team to score points on in the back line. Zach Fisher, 83, got subbed off. I mean, if they're if they're managing his minutes, I can understand. They, they're saying he had an injury. So, But then North on social media said it was tactical. I don't even know. Uh, Kerno, I watched the first half. Didn't watch much of the second half. I'm going to go off what people have sort of said. And uh, I think Richmond's game plan was to just really limit Kerno where... Um, I think just this style of gameplay limited uh, the Carlton key forwards to go nuts, and it was also and it was like the midfielders in the small forwards that were killing Richmond there. Luke Jackson seventy two. Now this is starting to piss me off. Now I was I, I was saying how good his consistency has been, but three out of the past five games he's just had these really poor scores. So um, yeah, ninety eight and one fifteen is fine, but yeah. Uh, frustrating with Jackson. I'm not going to trade him out because uh, just in case uh, there's a there's an injury or that sort of thing in the ruck line. But yeah, um, yeah. So just a lot of fake primos around. Um, 
in terms of who I think can bounce back, I'm I'm confident. I'm mildly confident Houston can. Uh, same with Young, but at the same time, if he's playing half forward, that's really going to stuff him. Uh, I I think Houston can. I think Houston can go up. I don't know, one or two plus for the run home. Uh, Gordon's fine. Sarong's fine. Dawson's fine. Uh, Rao, fake. English, he's just about fake the way things are going. I'd rather have Grundy. I'd rather have um, Cherry. Uh, I'd rather have a lot of uh, primo rucks ahead of English, but just something we've got to, we've just got to own, really. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Kerno, I think, can bounce back. I just don't think his game, so, uh, the game, the type of game suited him. Uh, I know it was against Richmond, but they just did all they can to limit key forwards. So, um, Raul and, I mean, Young's mildly concerning, but he has had some good scoring. So, just going to have to hope that, obviously, he can do 95 plus and hopefully no more of these. This has always been the problem with Hayden Young at the end of the day. It's these really rubbish kind of scores, 62, 65, 62, 70. He can just pull out a 60 here and there, and it's really frustrating me. Um, I think we saw this last year as well when he was actually a mildly popular pick. Look at these, uh, look at some of these scores. Um, and this is sort of the data we used to pick him this year as a full-time mid, but uh, we've sort of been um, been let down a little bit. So what are we doing with the side? I think it's got to be Rao. I'm going to understand, I'm going to, I'm going to give my reasoning why I might do this. I've got four trades. I'm willing to go down to three to do this with no 23rd. It's kind of rosy. Um, he's, he is priced at 435k. The really frustrating part about this was I was actually considering doing this last week, but I just thought I don't have the, don't have the guts to do this, but, um, one extra trade, sorry, one trade down, but this gives me about 60 K, uh, to work with. And this gives me 85 K for when a primo gets injured, that sort of thing. And you can use that money to go up instead of looking to go down. Um, that's sort of the theory, three trades. I'm, I might be willing to go down to two if, uh, one of Richards or Dowling can make a bit of money. Hopefully, um, this is sort of the theory. I think Rosie can score better from Rao, the way Rao's going. He can definitely score better. Uh, Rosie can definitely score better than him. Um, also as well, I think like, as I was saying about, I was thinking of doing this the previous week, but I just didn't do it because I wanted the extra trade but i've lost about this could have been about 136k i did the did the the mathematics and this could have been 136k in the bank three trades uh but uh we've lost about 50 60k on uh not making the move last week so very frustrating and lost down on like what 24 points so i think rosie will be fine um i think we'll probably do this and then uh Ideally not touch the side unless of an injury trade. And then maybe until like, uh, what is it, round? Heading into round 17 this week, maybe in round 19 or 20, re we reassess and grab a 23rd and just hope that we avoid the one-week suspensions, injuries, that sort of thing, the, uh, the rested games, that sort of thing for uh, up until round 19 sort of period, round 20. Well, yeah, we just really need a three-week period to uh, hopefully get Dowling up in price, get Richards up in price, and maybe do something with that. I'm not sure if it's worth the trade, but um, I guess we won't do it if there's any injuries that pop up and one of these promos miss. But, um, yeah, I I think it's all right. Like, Raul to Rose, I think Rose can score better than Raul, and I was just, uh, I just can't stand watching him anymore. We know Rosie in the past is, I don't think he'll do the same levels that he did last year. What did he average? 107. If he can average, I'm not even sure if, uh, Rao can probably average 100. They're, they're pro probably at the end of the day, they're both going to score very similarly. But this saves me 60K in the bank. And uh, that can give me a lot more flexibility for an injury trade down the line. Uh, so that's sort of the theory. 
Um, let's get Jackson back on field. 23rd primo plans, as I said, if we can just avoid the injury suspension bug for two or three uh, for three weeks and heading to head into round 20, getting rid of Richards, getting rid of uh, one of Richards, one of Dowling, look at it a mid forward that's massively plummeted in price, then that's when we'll look to attack. And maybe even uh, just needing to use one trade. And uh, if Richards gets to, I don't know, three, three forty k that's more out of hope than uh, thought. And he can get me to like a 400k player. So um, that's sort of the theory there. There's really not much else to talk about, to be honest, guys. I wish I had a bit more to say, but there really isn't much. Vice captain and captain, we'll look at, we'll look a bit more into it. Dacos does have good history against Essendon, but I sort of look more at the data um, than the previous matchups because so much changes. Like last three matchups against Essendon, this game's literally in his rookie season. That shouldn't be a uh, irrelevant. Um, data sort of sort of thing. So I know Essendon are pretty tough in the midfield to score on. So I'm probably going to pass on Dacos. There are two really juicy options they'll get to. Merritt, nah, I wouldn't think so. Um, is there anyone else? I'm Nick Martin, no. Ridley, no. Caldwell, no. North Melbourne, Sheasel, you could. Like if this isn't... It's act, there's actually some really good matchups, so I'm probably not going to do it. Same with Flanders. Flanders, to be honest, is more of a captain option than a vice captain because he just he rarely presents that ceiling, but he's a very handy fallback option. Bont, as good as he is, I think Porter like the tu uh, toughest or second toughest matchup for mids to score on, so I'm probably going to avoid that, but I think Bont's a perfectly fine option every single week. doesn't really matter on uh, matchups with him. He's just God. Uh, Geelong Hawthorne, don't have anyone there. Butters, I don't mind, but you, you never know. Same with Rosie. Houston, I'm going to need a bounce back from Houston. I think the dogs are somewhat decent. It's somewhat easy uh, for... Actually, I don't think they're easy. Um, In the last... In recent history, I don't think they're... In recent games, I actually think they're a little bit restrictive with halfbacks and defenders. I uh, have no one for this game. GWS Carlton, uh, Walsh, uh, nah. Uh, I think it was just a Richmond matchup that was heavily in his favour. Hopefully, Kerno can do well. Hopefully, Green can do well. Hopefully, Kerno with no Sam Taylor. This is where we, it becomes very interesting. Uh, specifically, these two matchups. Uh, we'll quickly talk about this. Uh, St Kilda, Sydney. If you had Jack Steele, no. I mean, Steele shouldn't be in your B, C or C plans. Unfortunately for anyone that has steel, um, Golden, that's actually not a bad matchup for him. If this, if it was a bad week for matchups for Primos and Saints and St Kilda, uh, Saints and Sydney were playing early, you could look at a Blakey, but uh, just looking at one score really, um, uh, Heaney you could, uh, but Windhager might go to him. Um, but I still think St Kilda relatively easy to score on in the midfield. Brisbane Adelaide, um, nah, not going to chuck the captain on Zorko or Dawson. This leaves these two options, which are my favourite options for Primos. Richmond are the easiest team to score on in the midfield, the back line, and I, th and I'm pretty sure just about the forward line. Oh, maybe not. I think they're like top six or something, but. This is where you look at two guys, not Hayden Young, not Luke Jackson, not Taranto if anyone has him, Caleb Sarong and Luke Ryan. Luke Ryan scored a 197 against Richmond uh, in round eight this year. Caleb Sarong went 137, not as sexy as Luke Ryan's 197, but at Optus Stadium, Richmond are just so easy to score in the midfield. Sam Walsh literally went... 148. So it's actually a really tough decision here whether to pick Sarong or Ryan for that VC option. And I can't give you an option. I think they're both very, very good options. Uh, very handy matchup. And we look into the 110 Sunday game. Max Gorn against Bailey Williams, who Bailey Williams has given up so many big scores recently. 
Um, and I just think Melbourne, they want to bounce back. I think they should be winning this game at the end of the day. I think Max Gorn's a pretty easy captain, in my opinion, uh, for this week. Uh, I really like that matchup at the G. Uh, Bailey Williams has been torn apart recently. So, I mean, Meg scored 145 against Bailey Williams. So, Ryan or Sarong? This is really tough. I'll put it on Ryan for now, but don't be surprised if I swap it to Sarong. And I guess the main thing is you just got to check if you're VCing someone on the Saturday night, which is pretty late uh, with no buy rounds. You got to actually have a look if you've got a loophole. Hor probably is. I don't think he's best. I don't think he's anywhere close to Melbourne's best side. Dawson, no, doesn't work. Dowling, uh, well, he's not a. Uh, the Essen bloke, no, he's done Friday night. Obviously, you got Livingston there. Um, and you got Max Hall. So you've got three different loophole guys. You could even vice captain Gorn, but I really like this Freo matchup. So vice captain Ryan and Sarong into Gorn, I think is my favorite option this week. Um, and yeah, well, let's just hope that Joe Richards gets a full game. Dowling stay, keeps his spot. Kynan and Brown can get a full game. What's his break even? 23. So he's actually going to... Uh, actually, it's not possible to lose money at 102k. Um. All right. Let's... What else can we look at? There's... Unfortunately, there really is just isn't much else to talk about. Um. I might leave a separate video looking over my trades. Might do that tomorrow if possible. Let's head into some of the leagues. Um... The SDS Super League, shout out to Colby, who knocked me off here. Lost by 20 points. That's frustrating. What killed me here? I'm trying to think. Um, Blakey helped me out in a lot of leagues, but I only won three, so not enough. Uh, the Sinclair 143, that just kills you right there. Uh, he even fielded Richards. Obviously, LDU, Grundy struggled as well. Just a rough week for primos, but yeah, just a mixture of these blokes. English, Young, Rao, Kerno, just didn't get me enough points there. So, well done to Colby there. And then looking at, I guess we'll have a look at some of the other matchups. Haven't done that enough this year. First place, Stephen, gets the job done against fifth place, Henry. Riley with a massive score, mark of the year in sixth place, beats seventh. Uh, Jake in eighth knocks off Spills, who's in tenth. Jordan got the job done against Jackson. That's a good result in uh with him being in nineteenth. Massive two thousand four hundred for Adam. That's a great result. Uh, Lincoln got the job done there. Zane, that that's my guy right there. I don't really like cheese. Is Zane? He's in a lot of my comments, a lot of my live streams. And I will show you the great news with Zane in a sec. Uh, he, beat, he beat Anthony Caminiti. Shout out to Caminiti. Uh, unlucky for the Saints there yesterday. Uh, Fish and Cripps got the job done there. And uh, Crano got the job done by three points there. Gee, that's stiff. Let's head into... Um, actually, I'll save this for the... I'll go through the SDS Times Pro League. I had so many close losses this week, but it's very frustrating losing a Brad uh, in the SDS Times Pro League, really sort of our grand final. It's our own two leagues, and we're facing off against each other. Just the English 70 just really stuffed me up. Got some two mammoth scores, but Tim English just cost me there. Um, we have a lot of similar players there. So, um, yeah, so... Uh, Brad knocked me off by two points. GG. I'm still an eighth. Just want to make the top eight for this league. And same with the SDS Super League. Uh, Scott got the job done there against Sean. Good win. 12th versus fifth. Uh, Colin got the job done here. Grace of Secrets, Steve. Just beat Corey there. Uh, Harry got the job done against Wade. Uh, Catherine, good win. Against Graham there. Uh, Lincoln got the job done against Finney QQuest, who I believe was, uh, I think he's the highest ranked uh, player in this in this league. Jaden, big score there. 
Uh, Paul got the job done, and uh, these two have just aren't playing the game. Let's head into the ladders. So let's have a look at some of these leagues, and I'll quickly go over the rest of my leagues on how I'm tracking. Um, so this is the SDS Super League. 56th best league in Supercoach. Shout out to everyone in this league. We're doing a great job here. And this is why we're excited about Zane. He, in our league, he's 135th overall, which is awesome, mate. He he had a massive week this week. Um, he commented in last week's video, and he did say he's, he was going to get in rank, and we had a look at this last week. And it's a bloody good side. I'd love to know how many trades he's got left. He's got good cover. Uh, he's really got good cover at the end of the day. Um, who do you have on the bench? Sorry, I know he's got... I thought he had 23. No, he has 22. Uh, I guess his sort of main decision is whether to jump off Luke Ryan. Uh, uh, sorry, not Luke Ryan. Nick Martin. But he's got some really good cover here. Most of his rookies are playing, so that's great. He's having a stellar season. I, I dream of Heaney, so... Shout out to him. A lot of the boys inside the top 3K there, 4K. Half the league is 5K or higher, so that is awesome. I mean, 14 out of 20 uh, are inside the top 10K, so that's great. And, um, yeah, no, nah, 18 out of 20 inside the top 20K. So this is a bloody good league. Um, my aim is just to hopefully make finals. I'm, I'm currently ninth. I probably don't deserve to be there. I mean, I think I've got like the 14th best rank. I don't deserve to make finals in this league. We've just got a lot of absolute gems in this league. And uh, this league, not as much. Um, yeah, just a couple of guys towards the end here uh, just aren't playing anymore. Um, but yeah, still a very good league. Shout out to Finny QQuest. Just outside the top 1K. I'm sure he can finish inside there. Uh, yeah, just a very solid bunch of boys in this league here. Let's go over some of my other leagues. Uh, this is my mate's league. I uh, lost to my mate Stephen, who is 13th. And uh, two of his rookies outscored like four or five of my primos. So that's what's going to lose you, even with a full primo side. Uh, very narrow loss to 19th place Tully. Um, still third in that. Doing all right. Um, the SDS Twitter league got a got a win there against uh Richard, so got a dub there. And my only other dub in leagues was actually beating Al Payton, who's um I think it was ranked one thirty five. What's happened here? No, don't do that. Um, yeah, he's having a really good season. Of course, this is the third best league in Supercoach, the Supercoach Legends League. Uh, sorry, the Scodfather Legends League. Gotten a couple wins in a row now. I just want to make the uh the bottom eight finals really, if we can just sneak in there. So let's just hope that we can get there. Good win against Al, beat Damon as well. So I've beaten fourth and fifth in the last two weeks somehow. Uh so that's been great. Uh close loss to Abs. Uh it was I was actually looking like I was gonna win that game, but uh that matchup, but um Houston just totally stuffed me up. And I think Jackson as well. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, oh, sorry, I beat Eddie there. Lost to DR, just yeah, just a lot of close losses. So, um, yeah, I think I ideally I make finals in half of these head to head leagues, but it's not a guarantee. The money leagues were the main one I want. Uh, sorry, not this one. The obviously I want to win as many leagues as possible, but this money league is the one I'm eyeing up. I've had a couple of bad weeks here, but if we can just be in the top eight, gives our, give ourselves a chance. And just see how we go at the end of the day. That is the aim. I mean, I'm the third best rank here and uh, still in sixth. So hopefully we can climb up the ladder there in the money league. Other than that, um, yeah, I don't, I'm don't. i just really struggling most of these leagues. So, yeah, we'll leave it there, guys. Um, trying to do, trying to think what else I can do for content. I'll do the live streams every now and then on a uh, Friday night uh, during the game. I might do a uh, video this week looking at all my trades this year. It's going to be a very sad way to look at some of these trades uh, that I've made. Um, might do some lists, that sort of thing, like who've been the best rookies this year. 
who have been uh who have been the best rookies this year, who've been the worst rookies this year, that sort of thing. Other than that, you're really sort of limited. Guess we can really quickly go over the most traded and most traded out players for this week. If anyone still has trades. Uh Sullivan, yep, yeah, that's pretty obvious. Clark, I mean, all these are perfectly fine. Fraja, I think he's got a 20 break even. So if you are looking to get a 23rd or or finalize your team, uh, even though you should have a finalized side by now, um, then that's fine to hold. Luckily, I mean, with uh, Buckley in, Rao, no issues with that. I can't. I, I'd, I'm very tempted to get rid of him this week, and I probably will. Sexton, um, I think he's a really good 23rd, so I don't have any issues people keeping Sexton, but if you need to use his money, then uh, by all means do it. Warner, now out of the side, he's probably just stuck there for you. Uh, Richards, I'd let him make some more money. Wilson, why, oh, why do people still have him? Why? He has lost so much money now. He's lost about 110k, I think. Just, uh, I don't know why people still have Darcy Wilson. I had to break it to you if you do. Bruce, no issues there, but good cover, rookie cover there. Humphreys, I mean, if you if you if you've got the trades, I don't see the issue with that. Rankin would love to get him. Same with Caldwell. I could have actually got in Caldwell instead of Kerno, but. I'd rather just have the extra 20K locked up in the bank. I would have been on 4K with a finalized side, and that was just, that was just limiting my sort of options. Sean Maker, probably a good defender um, rookie, but do keep in mind it is a St. Kilda rookie, and St. Kilda are very ruthless with their with their rookies. Same with Port. Port are very ruthless. Um, Rosé, don't see any problems with that. Kynan Brown, yep, perfectly fine. You just need someone really cheap. Sinclair, that's a lot of money to pay up for now, uh, but an extremely good pod. Uh, Dunkley, no problems with that. More, no problems with that. We'll end, the, we'll end the video there, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know it hasn't been my best season this season, but uh, we'll just try to think of ways to uh, hopefully climb up the ranks. We're going to need a little bit of luck to go our way. Um, if we get inside the top 5K, I think that is uh, probably best case scenario by far. But... um. I don't know. I just don't see my side. Um, I think we'll just sort of be hovering around this uh, this 8K sort of rank territory. So I think my season's done. But, oh, well, um, certainly a lot of lessons learned for next year. That's another video idea. I'll write that down. Lessons learned and different ideas. I guess a little preview would be um, no way am I spending uh, too much money on too many blokes. That's for sure. Um, that is a guarantee. So, uh, it's always worth, it's all, you're better off just upgrading your side quicker and quicker and quicker, and then make luxury trades off that instead of going for the blokes at 650, 660, which I've done so many times this year. So just a lesson learned for me. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.